Botty. 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 <laughs> Why not? Let's have a party. That's what we do. Sir Philip Gray. Money machine. There's nothing obscene about pouring champagne all over your daughter. Sir Philip Gray. Sir Let's not be me. You should not sell your yacht to pay back the pension fund like you are. Shouldn't be too long now. It's about a minute to go, something like that. Do you think he's you think he's alright? He's fine. Do you think do you really think he still gets nervous?
suppose he, he has to attach meaning to it, doesn't he, for the yak? Yeah, You can't do that. It's just disgusting, isn't it? No one needs that. Uh, very good morning to you. Hello. We are live uh, on the YouTubes. Um, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you know, it's the same old stuff. And uh, happy news. I've ungummed my mouth. Uh, I burned my mouth at the weekend. And uh, it's nice. It means that each morning I wake up. It's kind of like that scene in The Matrix where the guy whose voice isn't low enough for the parties playing says, How will you speak? when you have no mouth. Um, very traumatic scene for Keanu Reeves simply because it's the only scene in which he can't say whoa. Um, first things first, we've got John Holmes on the way. Delighted to say he's he's standing by. Uh, I've seen him, he's there, it exists. Uh, and I definitely know what I'm doing. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about musicals. Uh, first of all, those, I played a video game yesterday. Kind of needs to come with a bit of a trigger warning. It's called It Takes Two. Uh, it was a co-op game. I thought, well, that'd be fun. I, I can play that with my kid. The whole thing is explicitly about divorce and features uh, a, a rowing mum and dad. And then a guy comes along who's like a comedy Mexican cliche. Uh, I am the book of love and I'm going to teach you how to collaborate and work together and love things work. I said, okay, okay. Um, this feels like uh, a slightly worthy... Video. I mean, it's, it's, it's annoying because it's quite a nice puzzle game, um, but not really the most advanced uh, psychology going on there. Um, it's sort of like it was designed by, oh, I'm not going to say who, but, um, you know, what about abusive relationships? Maybe, maybe you shouldn't collaborate and work together. Maybe you just need to get the hell out of there. Um, anyway, just a little trigger warning for you because it was uh, pretty pretty harsh stuff. Anyway, it's Tuesday and in the new money of this podcast, uh, that means it's time for us uh, to decide on what the topic is going to be for this week's musical. We've had one or two suggestions, but we welcome yours. And you can even send a voice message, if you like, via the WhatsApp. You can WhatsApp, check it yeah, on 07862, 032. Now, for a few weeks, GB News has been announcing they'll start broadcasting in a few weeks, which means that we only have a few weeks to steal a bit of that market share. Uh, and so with that in mind, we've got a, a new format for you. Uh, it's, I'm delighted to present Britain's brightest and lightest breakfast show, uh, Britain Awake. Uh, we've got a, a very, very special uh, guest host. Uh, so uh, here it is. Britain Awake with John Holmes. Not a word. <laughs> right, I can hear you now. I okay, can hear you great. now. Okay, you cool. disap what, what happened there was, right, and that's typical when you're launching a new channel, there are technical gremlins. <laughs> so I, what happened was... That is such a I, media term. Uh, yeah, gremlins. I could see you, you leant backwards, mm. right, and then you just, everything stopped. Everything just froze and stopped mm. and nothing happened. Including and, my poisoned heart. Yeah, and I knew that like other like previous radio stations we may know about you've obviously scrimped on engineering budget <laughs> that is all, all right, no, play, it's fine i'll that. play the jingle anyway it's britain have, awake have good, good morning Here's good morning jingle. welcome to britain awake radio uh we've got a new look put the bed back on put the bed back on 
Britain Awake with John Holmes. That's right, it's Britain Awake. You're listening to Britain Awake. It is radio for clicks. And so, and and I will, what I've done, I've noticed a gap in the market that says, um, say what the management want you to say uh, to promote some kind of agenda they think will fill a gap in the market. And I'm doing it for coins, whether I believe it or not. So welcome along to Britain Awake. That's our new logo. You can probably see it behind me. And um, and, and and here we are. And here, is it, I don't know what happens now. Do I? I we're going to go to the line. We're going to go to the phone lines. We're going to go to the phone lines. That's what we're going to do. Um, because uh, you know this has tapped in this uh, brand new radio station with visuals, of course, because that's what you do now. Has tapped in to a world of listeners. Five or six of them who will call up and argue uh, from a right-wing perspective about vaccines and lockdown and so forth um, now that sort of Brexit's been forgotten a little bit. So uh, on the line, I think, um, from the parties, the founder of the party uh, and the only member of the party, Britain overall, Brian Colt is on the phone. Brian, can you hear me? Welcome to Britain Awake Radio. Thank you very much, John. Uh, It's very good to be here. It's good to have you on. So, um, so listen, we, uh, we 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 started to emerge, didn't we, out of the hell? And it was a hell, Brian, wasn't it, of of lockdown and um, the government, the Stasi boot of vaccination uh, is is all over, it's stamping down on the country as we speak, Brian. And um, so what do you make of the situation we're in, Brian? Cole, oh, it's Britain. a joke. It's an absolute joke, John. Yeah. Uh, I, for one, am sick and tired of the whole thing. I uh, I have forsworn, obviously, the vaccination. I'm not I'm not going to be doing any of that. And yeah. I will not wear a face diaper. It's very nice to see you bare-faced. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of the people out. who agree with the likes of us, because I've changed my opinion now on everything, for money and clicks, Brian. Yeah. So um, I think, I think, I think bare, bare-faced is is a description ironically isn't it of the lies about masks that they they tell us isn't it that, so we, we we're barefaced literally yeah but they're lies the mask wearers are lying to us with it's mask disgusting. faces not bare faces mask faces and for, that's confusing brian for a start well i've been giving out free hugs john yeah not many takers not gonna lie to you i am an in aunt. I am involuntarily untouched. Yeah. I would like to be touched. Yeah. And I'm not likely to to happen anyone who wants it. Is it, Brian? Not, not, not for you. Not with your um. Not with not least because of that register you're on. But but we'll gloss over that. That's not this. That's not this call. This call is about. Listen, it's a joke, mate. You can't cuddle other people's dogs. Like during the lockdown. Someone called the police on me because I cuddled their dog. Yeah. And when the police got there, they said, about 2 a.m., they said, whatever the motive, it's still breaking and entering. Yeah, which is, which is, now that depends, you see. If you'd known the law, you could have argued back because that depends on which end of the dog you go in. Right. It, a friend of mine's a vet, end, right? A friend of mine. Well, he's not a friend of mine. A bloke I met down the pub because I still went in pubs when they were closed, Brian. Right, I just right. went inside the pubs and yep. sat down with a bloke who knows a friend who's a sister's bloke's friend is right. a vet, and he said right. he said that whatever it depends on the end of the dog you go in as to whether or not you've broken the law. So, Brian, you should check that with your solicitor. I will check. I'll check the ends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Always check the end of a dog, Brian. But which end? That's the thing. Um, I'm glad we're finally de-locking. I'd like to yep. see how long it lasts. Later well, on today, I'm going to Garfunkel's yeah, for an indoor yeah. meal. I'm taking a screwdriver and I'm removing the sneeze guards from the salad bar. It's yep. pathetic. Yeah. So what? What? what would you... You, are you? I mean, what are you in favour of, Brian? Are you in favour of, of the herd immunity? So, for example, if uh, if I and you went out for a romantic meal together, perhaps we take a dog As to Garfunkel's, yeah. right? And w- me, you, and the do- you remove the sneeze guard, so I don't want to get yeah. involved in that because that probably is a criminal offence. Right? But then, once you've done that, we knew which end. Yeah, me and the dog 
will sneeze over the croutons. Yeah. Right. And that is is because I I am I have got COVID, so if I do that right and sneeze oh, yeah. in the croutons with the dog, yeah. then and that spreads the, the virus, then it's herd immunity, isn't it? We don't need the masks anymore, all the lo- lockdowns, do we? So, John, you haven't got COVID. It does exist. Everyone knows that. And can I say, you know, you and I historically, I've called you on a number of radio stations, and we haven't always seen eye to eye. But it is very nice to see that you're finally on board with all of this for money. Well, it's because the management's changed, Brian. Right. And, I, and I've decided, they, they gave me, I'll be honest with you, they gave me an ultimatum. And they said, you can carry on with your, uh, with your attitude that's um, not left wing exactly, but just a bit centrist. They say, you know, you carry on like agreeing with mask wearing and stuff. Or for money, you yeah. can cut stuff up. And I said, I, so, right. So I'm anti, right. So I've got here, right. I know. Cutting up masks, Cut right? Up. So yesterday, I've got a shringe, right? And I'm, I've had enough. I've had enough of these. It's quite difficult. Stupid syringes. Sh- wait. Well done, mate. Well stupid. done. Oh, fair. Can you do it? I've had enough of these stupid. Don't, don't put it in your Stupid. Mouth, mate. Uh, it, unworkable, scientifically, and actually in this case, liquid empty. Mate, we're looking at ten thousand clicks. Easy on that. Stringy, stringy. If if you can do it, can you do? You did it. Well done, mate. Right, and now, admittedly, right, this is cowpole stringe, but I won't take cowpole because, well, one, it's for children, but also, you know, I don't want to be part of that conspiracy. Cowpole, Interpol. Exactly. I am. I am. I'm. I'm anti cowpole. Right, I'm anti, I'm anti-vax, I'm anti-lockdown, I'm anti-natal. I won't have natal, right? No. Uh, I'm anti-Macassa, right? And, and an anti-Macassa, what does it do, Brian? Covers well, things up, doesn't it? On yeah. the sofa, right. on the back of my auntie's sofa when I was growing up. It, Anti-Macassa, it's a cover-up, and I will not. It's a mask. For yeah, a sofa. for furniture, it's a furniture yeah. mask. I'm not having it. So yes, you and I now do agree and see eye to eye, and we can we can see mouth to mouth if we want. I, I don't want to see your mouth because it's got a burnt oil fork in it. But if it hadn't, then I I would see in your mouth, and like a dog, I'd also see in the other end, and we'd agree, Brian, for once, because I've changed my yeah. money, uh, my mind for money, and money for mind. I don't care anymore. I can very easily imagine you leaning over me. Semi brutally, semi tenderly, and yep. just spitting into my mouth, and it's something I've thought about a lot, and I'm well, very comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. you know, quite, what do you make, quite, Brian? Quasi, got... quartang, quasi quartang, saying don't be too exuberant. Excuse me, I will exube as much as and over as many people as I like. Thank you. I will exube lube. That's what I'll exube. Brian, and I'll take that to Garfunkel with you and the dog and and see what I can do with the croutons then. I've had enough. He's an in aunt. Can I ask you about, Brian, given your uh, previous political stance, can I ask you about the Indian variant? You certainly can. I thought I could. Yeah. What? Because the thing is, John, I'm anything but racist. Well, you are a racist, Brian. But, no, no, but... I'm anything but a racist. I hate women. I've got a very bad attitude to people with disabilities. But I am not. There's loads. There's, there's loads of examples on Twitter of me being not being racist. Yeah. That, yeah, but there's loads of examples of me like about being, their coffee being that racist. Time. So what all I'm what I'm getting at, Brian, is is the Indian variant must be posing a. a I just want to know what you think about it, really. I'm going to give you the, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes just to talk about that, starting now. Thank you very much. Well, the first thing is that it doesn't exist either because the, the virus doesn't exist. The whole thing is made up. That said, now I'm not saying this about Indians. I'm saying some races are more deviant than others. I'm not saying which ones. So, yes, they might deviate and they might vary a bit more than others. But that saying that doesn't make me racist. It's a simple statement of racial fact. Yeah. What about you, you, John? 
Well, I, you know, I'm, you and I are going to part ways in this dangerous territory, Brian, because, you know, mm. just, just on the racism stuff, I'm with you on everything else now for coins and money. And because mm. my management have said, if I want to keep a job, I've got to say these things, even though I don't really believe it. Mm. But I think I'll part company with you. what I here's what I'm concerned about. Right. Slavery. Yeah. Right? Cause slavery. Right? That concerns you. Well, yeah, it does, Brian, because what are we? Right. Because slavery. Right. We used to have slavery, didn't we? When Britain was great. Do you remember? Yeah, right? I do. <laughs> and then and then uh, very and fondly. Then, and then, and now, what are we? But slaves to a vaccine, so yeah. you can trace that right back, can't you? And that's Grace Jones could have done a cover of that, couldn't she? Yeah. So and here's, what, I, here's what I'm right. Here's what I'm going to suggest. All right. 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 So right. you know, you I saw you the other day, didn't I, on the lockdown rally? Yeah. The anti-lockdown oh, yeah. rally. There you were, right? But um, I took the time during that lockdown rally to stand protecting a statue of Churchill, right? In, Quite in right. London. Now, I was, it got me thinking, Brian, what if we were able to somehow, and I don't know, I haven't got the technology to do this, but what if we were able to somehow animate the statues of our forefathers, some of whom were slavers, mm. right? And it would only be right and proper for them now to atone for that by making them anti-vaccine slavers we're enslaved to the vaccine remember when i said that right right so yeah so now we animate somehow animate the statues a bit like have you seen jason the argonauts 1963 yeah right you know talos the big statue that came oh, to yeah. life what if we somehow do that to all of the statues and they join us on our anti-lockdown march do you think the disney imagineers could turn their attention to that well, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't mind which of the Avengers does it, but at some point that's what. And then we could argue that uh, big farmer who we're in right. fall to, right? Mm -hmm. So we have big farmers, a great big army of big farmers <laughs> marching with us, and the animated statues like out of Jason the Argonauts, nineteen sixty-three against lockdown right and again the big farmers are atoning for big farmer i haven't thought this through properly no, guys, I'm honest. but essentially no, they'll no, be like the army of skeletons from yeah. jason the argonauts 1963 yeah. Yeah. plus the animated yeah. statues yeah. 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 and then the right the people in this country the sheeple should open their eyes or if they're dogs open both ends of themselves and to us and see the truth brian absolutely right thank you very much very quickly john yeah What do you think of Pretty Patel's hostile environment? And how hostile do you think it is in there? Well, now... Oh, but uh, it's well hostile in there, John. Yeah, but you, there is such a thing, you may have heard of it, journalists go on hostile environment training, don't they? And that is a thing where, and I know this because I've done it, where they drive you to some woods in Hampshire and mock up. <laughs> that is quite hostile. I'm... <laughs> I filmed a thing for Nuts TV in Hampshire once. There you in go. A pub. There you go. Were you uh, Nuts TV deep in Hampshire? I, I was told to um, F off back to Sussex, which I hadn't come from. And I had pint glasses buzzed at my rental. Well, now brand. you know what it's like being told to go back to where you came from, isn't it? Brian, it's a taste your own, taste your own medicine there, isn't it? That's what that is. But no, you go so in in, in you go to Hoss, Ham, Hampshire, and the SAS train you in in situations that you might encounter in a hostile environment. So if one was in Pretty Patel's hostile environment, mm. and that happened to me, I would now know how to get out the back door. Pretty Patel's back door. Yeah, without being harmed. Because I've had the training, bro. So that's how you deal right. with anyone's hostile environment. Always take litmus papers. Yeah. <laughs> First I mean, that, that's just good advice anywhere, isn't it? So. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. John, and I've had enough. Finally joining of us. The, of these. Yes. God awful. That's another 40,000 clicks easy. Stupid. <laughs> Empty.
pretty scientifically invalid. I can't. It's too difficult. Vaccines. What Thanks very much, Brian. It's Brian. Uh, Brian Colt there, talking to Britain's new channel, Britain Awake Radio. I'm Mark Dutt Owner. It's fine. Well done. <laughs> Is that right? Oh, wow. John Holmes there. Don't forget, uh, Series 902 of The Skewer, which started last year, is on Radio 4 every day at 12. Again at 3, and again at 6, 9, 10, 11, and a quarter to 12. Uh, some nice reaction there. Jem was uh, delighted by the high quality logo design. Last year I went to the trouble of writing just Sack Pat backwards on a whiteboard behind me, only to find our technology didn't mirror the picture. Yeah, I've had a lot of issues with mirroring and not mirroring. <laughs> Early days, bedding in. Barney says, any chance John would tell the joke he wouldn't tell on the The One Show show? forget who it was other than it was a fellow writer on the 11 o'clock show john says he would tell it if we bought him a pint i'll buy him a pint i'd love to buy him a pint steve doherty says we want ammo what this morning wasn't enough for you anybody listen to him on the today program yet i haven't i'm gonna listen back jem says you've got to be careful with your dog ends jane says i prefer aberdeen steakhouse over garfunkel's I, I couldn't tell you. I, all I'll tell you is I went to one of them and the potato salad was fizzy. But that was just, you know, it's a good ferment. Very into fermenting. You should see my ginger beer in the airing cupboard. The little blollopy thing. You know the blollop? Little water valve thing at the top? It's doing it like every 10, 15 seconds now. Jem thanks us for the much needed throwing of a light up dog's ends. You're welcome. Jane observes, Churchill's not wearing a mask, is he? She also says, just working in Pretty Patel's office is a hostile environment, according to my sources. Well, I can say anything about that. Obviously, there's a full investigation underway, isn't there? Anyway, it's time for us to move on and look at uh, suggestions for what we're going to make a musical about. We're going to do the show right here on Thursday. Uh, if there are any suggestions. Jacob, good morning, listener. Um, this is Julie here, and I've been thinking about a musical number. And in particular, I've been thinking about my one of my favourite musicals, Oklahoma, which opens with the song Oklahoma, and there's a bright golden haze on the meadow, and the corn is as high as a elephant's eye. That's right, a elephant. Yes, yep. a elephant. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was wondering, perhaps... You might want to do a song about setting the scene, maybe uh, London 2021. I'm sure, it's going to be different from the London scene in musicals like Oliver. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, Julia, I cut you off. Still learning this. It's bedding in. Just bedding in, uh, different Oliver. Different from the London scene in musicals like Oliver. Oh, okay. But, you know, I it's, get it. It's yeah, a yeah, start. Yeah. Isn't it? That's a nice idea. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thanks very much, Julie. Uh, don't forget, it's uh, 07862 032 654 if uh, you've got any uh, thoughts on that, because we're going to workshop it tomorrow. I quite like that idea, though. It's a nice idea. Uh, we've got another little mystery message here. Hello, Jim. 
good. Oh, I have been a long time listener. Okay. And let me say how thrilled I am to be able to finally WhatsApp you. Hmm. Instead of just looking at you through binoculars. <laughs> it's lovely. Thank you very much. Am I going to out you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Uncle Neil. Uh, and this from Barney. Uh, hi, Jake and the uh, other What's Yappers. Um, yeah, I don't think you can get a musical out of it or anything like that, but um, uh, have you thought about writing a song about the guy who hired you out the lawnmower? It could be sort of like a sort of Kurt Vile sort of miserablest <laughs> ballad <laughs> of a guy who rents out garden equipment and is a complete bastard. Um, anyway, uh, have a great day, everyone. Uh, I really like the new format. Barney. Oh, thanks, Barney. That's brilliant. Uh, it's a good suggestion, too. I really like that. Uh, there we go. And someone who's a friend of Cheeky says, do more funny voices. Don't know who it is, uh, but thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, Jem says, do we have to see your ginger beer in the airing cupboard? Sounds intimate. Uh, you don't have to, but I will show you. I'll bring it. I'll, I'll bring it in tomorrow. We'll do a showing assembly if you like. Still sort of figuring out all the things that we can actually do now that we're live on the YouTubes. Uh, if you're if you're listening to this podcast and you're thinking, well, how do I get this? How do how do I watch this? I want to watch this. You go to youtubecom slash pod. It is as simple as that. Uh, we've got some any other business to get through. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna have a think about because uh, we sort of need to choose today what we're gonna do. I do like the idea of the sort of the big, the big London. See, I like the sort of marketplace thing. You know, what's the uh, who buy my roses? And I get to do all my cockney voices, which I always enjoy. It's a nice idea, and I wonder if we could we could put in a lawnmower. Who'll rent my lawnmower? Rentals. Anyway, I'm gonna have a think about that. Hannah uh, on WhatsApp says, uh, Morning, Jake, and the best of luck uh, for not today. Thank you, 4.0. Yeah, I suppose it is. Uh, this was yesterday. Uh, anyway, it says, You asked many moons ago for our top five major concerns. Oh, God, that sounds, that sounds horrendous. Uh, if I'd thought this through, I would have downloaded my uh, sort of at the sign of the swing and symbol pastiche, and I'd, I'd play that now. In fact, I think I can. I think I can. Hang on a minute. I can do this. Just bear with me, will you, while I do some production mid show? Why not? Uh, here we go. Here's some. Here's here's some. Sp yes. Here are Hannah's top five major concerns. At five, will my husband know that I helped his lockdown sourdough star to meet an untimely demise? At four, will my husband remember that there's some spare sourdough starter in the freezer? At three, how will I pick my favourite Eurovision entry this year? That's easy, it's got to be Iceland. And if it's not, I'll judge you. I'm very excited about Eurovision. Hey, that's another thing we can maybe touch on. At number two, how much scorn will I receive from my friends when they remember I'm a Eurovision fan? I'd like a quick straw poll, actually. Are you a Eurovision fan or not? Because I'm, I'm pretty big into it. And number one, the number one concern Hannah has is no longer a concern. Because I don't now have to download yet another app and think of a password as you're using YouTube to broadcast the post. Oh, yeah. Take care and stay safe, says Hannah. Thank you very much indeed for those. Don't really know how to uh, end this one. I don't know how to end this jingle. I'll just... End. There we go. Done. Uh, just broke it. Uh, well, uh, I think that's pretty much it. We've got a couple of emails that we could read. Uh, we've got uh, some animal facts. Gosh, we were doing that a long time ago as well, weren't we? Uh, this is from Lindsay. Hi, Jake and the Venus fly yaps. This is from nearly a month ago. I've done a little digging and found some fun animal facts for you and Spike and the listeners. In 2002, a group of starlings... Oh, got starlings in the garden and they got three baby ones these little fuzzballs but they're like bigger than the parents because they're all fluffy they got really fuzzy heads and they sit there going mom mom it's like you're bigger than them just but they're a lot of fun to watch uh they all had a bath together uh anyway in 2002 a group of starlings successfully stole four thousand dollars in quarters from a car wash in virginia what 
The birds had figured out how to get inside a coin dispenser and were making off with hundreds of dollars in quarters every single day. The thieving Stanleys were caught when the car wash's owner installed a security camera. That's amazing. I did you there's a great TED talk about a guy who trained crows to use vending machines. That was really, really cool. Uh, like you, they put in a coin and they got a peanut. Uh, it was very cool. And he was saying you could use them to like pick up litter and drop it in trash. There's all kinds of things you could you could you could do. Uh Kim said that sound effect was the ginger beer bursting. And I believed her for a second there. There was a moment of panic there. I uh, don't think so. Well, that was. <clears throat> anyway, I should probably go and check it. In 2018, a six-month-old bobcat was repeatedly caught killing chickens at a cluster of farms in Utah. The bobcat, who was named Mr. Murder Britches, <laughs> was safely captured by the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources or Udwu, as it's known, and released back into the wild. Yet he proceeded to come back to the farms two more times. Uh, wow. And finally, the armadillo scales are made out of bone, meaning that they technically have an exoskeleton in addition to their in inside skeleton. In into in in I hope you find these animal facts entertaining. Lindsay, I do. Uh, you can always email us. It's not today at swanburst.com. Uh, oh, look, we've had some musical suggestions. Hang on a second. Uh, Neil's got a suggestion. He says, here's a story I think is worth a look at for the mini musical. Uh, mail from 2008 is finally delivered after it's found in a dead postman's house. Oh, my God. That's so dark. Families in Wantage and Grove in Oxfordshire have received posts sent as far back as 2008 after the Royal Mail found bags filled with old cards, bills, checks and gifts in a previous employee's home after they died. It was a pleasant surprise for some as they got magazines from years ago, DVDs, PC and Nintendo Wii games and cards with cash inside. Another woman reportedly opened a handmade wedding anniversary card from her mum who had died a few years ago. Oh, that's dark. Local residents' social media groups set up threads for people who've moved houses in the last 13 years to get in touch and exchange posts. Um, uh, some people got checks for £150, which nowadays is worth, I don't know, what, 20 euros. <clears throat> so uh, they're looking into what, what happened in the case. That's uh, slightly uh, slightly mawkish, but it's, it's, it's worth a go. I don't know. We can, we can think about that. Um, okay. I'm going to leave it there because, uh, you know, time time's ticking on and I, I, I can't feel my teeth anymore. Uh, hopefully my lips will be a little bit better tomorrow. But I think we went, we're bedding in. We're bedding in and I think it's going OK. Uh, thanks so much uh, for your company this morning. So tomorrow we're going to workshop the musical. I'll have a think. Uh, still welcome your thoughts on uh, what out of those stories uh, we could maybe settle on. Don't forget, you can always uh, voice message us 07862 032654. And don't forget, it's youtube.com slash not today pod if you want to watch 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. See you then. This has been a Swanburst Media production. <laughs>